Today's show is brought to you by 3C. Comprehensive Cannabis Consulting helps clients design, build, and optimize their cannabis business from initial assessment and planning through operationalization and ongoing management. To learn more about how their services are tailored to meet the unique goals and objectives of each of their clients, go to 3ccannabis.com. And for a limited time, 3C is giving all MJ Bulls listeners an additional 10% off their fees just for mentioning that you heard it on the show. Go to 3ccannabis.com. Locate adults in specific markets with specific buying propensities. Locate them on our network of partner sites and serve them an ad. So we can compliantly define who we want to talk to and then reach them with an ad, track engagement, and essentially offer just basic programmatic advertising in a scaled and safe environment for cannabis advertisers. From Bumminet Media, it's the MJ Bulls Podcast, a show about raising cannabis capital. I'm Dan Humiston, and on today's show, how this marketing company is filling the digital advertising void left by Google and Facebook's refusal to run cannabis ads. Today on Raising Cannabis Capital Series, we are joined by Adam Schlett, founder and head of strategic partnerships at SafeReach. Adam, welcome to the MJ Bulls podcast. Dan, thank you so very much for having me, man. Excited to be here. I'm excited to have you too, because most of our listeners know enough about the cannabis industry and know how difficult it is to advertise. But, you know, there's a lot of new listeners and, you know, it never hurts to go back and refresh everybody's memory. What are some of the challenges that cannabis companies face right now trying to reach their consumers? I think the lack of a scalable and sustainable kind of paid media universe. You can't go to the Facebook, you can't go to you know, Instagram, which is owned by Facebook. You can't go to Google. And even in instances where you're building organic audiences, there's no guarantee that that audience will be available tomorrow due to their propensity to shut down accounts without reasoning. So Safe Reach was born out of kind of a practical application of, of data and an interest to be in the cannabis space and an interest in kind of combining those to make a, a solution that will help kind of fill a void that exists today. Oh, uh, it's a huge void and it's a huge void. And we'll talk a little bit about Safe Reach and you, know, you take a little different angle than some of the other people that we've had on the shows. And it's fascinating how you've figured out how to skin this cap. Tell our listeners exactly what you do and how you do it. Yeah. So my partner and I come from the data world where we were taking data from the mobile space, from the from the online world and from the off world and marrying it at the individual level through a kind of a variety of processes so that you could take a snapshot of a person and say, hey, I know Adam lives in New Jersey. Adam makes X income. Adam drives his car. Adam has this device. Adam has these apps on device. And Adam browses these things online. Kind of the major... like. What most CPGs and, and pretty much every advertiser out there is utilizing today to build and acquire audiences online. We took this application and our access to data and where we came from and said, how do we apply this into the cannabis space to offer a better solution for online customer acquisition, which is how Safe Reach was born. So roll into it. So you have relationships with many, many, I guess, websites. I'll let you take it from there. There's two real sides to it, not to go into uh, like a programmatic advertising 101. There are supply, which are sites and apps that have real estate on their website that they're looking to sell. And then there's users. There's people who are on the internet who go to these sites or apps. So and then we're essentially acting as just a giant pipe connecting those that's managing and minding the legalities around it while doing so. So we've sourced around a thousand plus websites and apps that get a high volume of traffic that are from everything forums to, you know, major branded news sites to some dating sites to entertainment sites that are non-endemic to cannabis. So they're not cannabis related sites uh, that are open to hosting cannabis ads on their sites. We use that data that I kind of flew over in the, the start of the interview to and push that into our ad buying environment and use all that data that we've collected through our relationships to locate adults in specific markets with specific buying propensities, locate them on our network of partner sites and serve them an ad. 
So we can compliantly define who we want to talk to and then reach them with an ad, track engagement, and essentially offer just basic programmatic advertising in a scaled and safe environment for cannabis advertisers. If you take it for granted because you're in this space and so you know that what you know what's happening in the real world outside of cannabis, but for us that aren't really in this space, I mean, how you can really drill down to that person and get the message right to them. To me, I find it just it's fascinating. And I think our listeners would, will feel the same way. Give us an, an example of how you would do this for a company. Perfect example. I, I've seen a ton of articles in the last few weeks where the baby boomers are the biggest demographic purchasing cannabis, the growth demographic, right? Mm-hmm. Someone who is 25 years old and is an avid consumer is quite a bit different than my mom, who is 60 and hasn't done anything with cannabis since she was in college, but is curious and wants to learn more about the different products that are out there and where to go find them, right? Mm -hmm. So that message and that strategy to get both of those people into the store to essentially complete the same transaction are very different. So how we use data is to create buckets of audiences that are aligned with whatever the advertiser goal is. And let's say it's the major vape pen manufacturer Someone who's dealing with chronic pain for like CBD or like a low dose THC thing may want a different message than someone who's just like smoking every single day and buys every week. Understanding the nuance of the segmentation and then being able to reach those people with the right message and then track that engagement at the audience level as it pertains to whatever the campaign goal is, is really what we want to be able to help define and execute with cannabis brands, agencies, advertisers, et cetera. Because what we're hearing is that doesn't really exist today. And as these brands grow and competition increases, which will inevitably happen, they're going to want to understand what's the cost to acquire a customer. How are we acquiring customers? What demographics are growing? What message resonates with each group? How are we marketing these products? So let let me see if, if I can capsulize what you just said. My mom went on to Southwest Airlines website a different ad would pop up than if my son went on to Southwest Airlines website. 100%. And okay. let's say your son is not 21, he would not get that ad because we know who is 21 and we know your mom is of age and in that market. Southwest is not in, in our network of sites. Would love them if anybody from Southwest is listening. But yes, that's the right idea. I want to take a minute to tell everyone about an exciting free opportunity that one of our former guests, Good Harvest Company, is offering retail operators and cannabis brand managers in the adult use market. Good Harvest Company is preparing to launch their platform, which uses customers' buying and shopping behaviors to help brands effectively reach their customers. And for a limited time, Good Harvest Company will offer participating companies free access to their data in return for their feedback. To learn more, go to goodharvest.co. So moving forward, where do you see your company going? Like, what is the next step for you in this growth phase? Uh, We're familiar with a few of our competitors who have kind of have a mixed bag of reviews. So I think the next three months, as we just launched last week with our live product, we've been working on this for about eight or nine months now. And as a passionate advocate for adult responsible use, have been kind of keeping a pulse on when it was the right time to get involved with what we know how to do. I think over the next three months, we're going to be focused on just all organic growth. We work with a lot of agencies and some brands direct. I think it's no secret that the mass market away from the the actual cannabis industry, no one's trying to get involved. Growing any way we can, which will typically be through folks who interface with cannabis brands today, interfacing with cannabis brands directly and helping them, educate them on what's actually available to them now, how this works and how it's different, and then growing and scaling. So that involves probably some additional staff and maybe some adding some additional infrastructure. And in order to do that, you're probably going to have to raise money because it's tough to do that through cash flow, I suspect. Yeah, I mean, we're essentially the ecosystem for all things cannabis media related. So while we're collecting money from the advertiser, we're also using that money to buy the ad placements and then pay the publishers or the website owners. So we're essentially the epicenter of this whole new kind of micro economy we're trying to create on the internet. 
we definitely are going to need to, uh, to propel growth where uh, we'd like to maintain control as much as possible. The big thing for us is what we've discussed is who's going to help us grow through their network of partnerships or brands, not necessarily cannabis brands, but who's going to help us get our product into the most agencies or brands that can actually leverage it and utilize it correctly. Th- those are the people we're really looking to partner with. Yeah. So in addition to the uh, financial injection, you also need those warm introductions and those strategic partnerships that are only available through some other organizations that already have some of these people that you're looking to partner with. If you're raising capital, what exactly are you looking for and what's the opportunity for investors? Well, we're generally we're East Coast based. So we're probably going to need to move out to the West Coast. So I think that would probably be the next phase for us is getting entrenched in the more established retail markets, which would be opening a sales and ops office out on the West Coast. So that's really what excites us the most right now. Well, we've been speaking with Adam Shillette, founder and head of strategic partnership at Safe Reach with a hyphen in the middle. (laughs) And and we'll have all their information. I'll have Adam's email address and Safe Reach's website address on the MJ Bulls website. Adam, thanks for doing the show with us today. I find this fascinating what you're doing and I just think there's a ton of opportunity. So I'm really happy that you're on this show to share this with us. I can't thank you enough. Obviously, any opportunity we get to preach about ourselves a little bit is something we don't take for granted. And the way you guys are helping get information to the market about the different companies away from just their marketing websites and having more candid conversations is something as someone who's got a pulse on a thumb on the industry, I really enjoy. So thank you. And looking forward. hopefully uh, we'll circle back in six months, 12 months and have some really exciting stuff to talk about. Well, for definitely, definitely. You have to promise to be back on the show, but so good luck. Let me take a second to thank Trevitt Hill for sponsoring today's show. Cannabis investors expect big returns from the companies that they invest in. Unfortunately, not all cannabis investments succeed. Trevitt Hill's management team works with investors to help turn around, or in some cases purchase, their underperforming portfolio companies. To learn more, go to trevithill.com. Thanks for listening to the MJ Bulls podcast. To learn more about today's guest or to become a guest, visit our website at mjbulls.com. Today's show was produced by Bumminant Media, with original music composed by Jamie Humiston. I'm Dan Humiston, and you've been listening to the MJ Bulls Podcast.